In this Tobacco University video, I'm going to cover standard nutrient soil test analysis, give you some idea what that will actually show you, so you can be better informed and reason why you should be taking this soil test. All right, let's go over standard nutrient soil test analysis. Well, I'll start off with why we do soil test. Well, in short, it's to know the nutrient levels to ensure optimum plant conditions can be met. In addition to fertilizers, knowing the soil's pH can also help determine nutrient availability and if lime or sulfur applications are needed to balance out that pH to make those nutrients available to the crop you're choosing to grow. Now, what can the test determine? So there's many things. Uh, labs might have slight variations, but for the most part, they tell you pH, and they also give you plant available phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, micronutrients, lead, as well as aluminum. All important things to know. Some may go a little bit more and give you a little bit more, but at least they should give you these, and these can give you a great start. Uh, micronutrients might vary from lab to lab. So why is pH so important? Well, pH is so important because if you look at this uh, image here, it has a great graphical representation of how soil pH affects availability of plant nutrients. Meaning, if we're looking here at a pH of 7, we can see that those in green are greatest available around that a particular pH. So in comparison, we can see that nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur, calcium, magnesium, relatively plant available at a pH of 7. Compared to iron, which is more available to plants at more of an acidic pH. Molybdenum, just the opposite, more available to plants at more of a basic pH. So depending on what type of crop you're growing, knowing the target pH level can affect potentially what nutrients it may need. As an example, blueberries tend to like a more acidic environment, and they tend to like a little bit more of those kind of iron, as an example, uh, more of the nutrients available at these lower levels. Um, so again, great comparison here, and you can see how you get slightly off and how it can really affect the availability of certain nutrients to your plants. So this is why pH is very important and very important to know and make modifications for. Now remember, soil test provides the plant available nutrients. A soil test does not provide the total nutrients. However, it is an estimation of the plant available nutrients. If a plant cannot use the nutrient, then they're not included in the soil analysis, at least theoretically. This is why if people take the same soil sample and they like divide it up into two subsamples and they send it off to different labs, they're going to put one lab against another to see who gives them the most accurate results. And they get the results back and they're slightly different. Well, this is because each lab is doing the best it can to estimate the plant available nutrients. And there might be slightly different uh, in the numbers, but for the most part, they're going to be very close to one another because it's not the total amount of phosphorus you have in your soil, not the total amount of potassium you have in your soil. It's an estimate of what's available to your plants. And we can see here how pH will impact that. Now, what are the limitations uh, to uh, soil testing? And soil test is not the same as a soil diagnostic test that tests for disease, so keep that in mind. Soil tests can also not determine drainage issues, environmental stresses, as well as insect problems. So they're great at telling you what nutrients might be available to your plants, but that's their limitation. So growers often wonder what's the best time of year to go through and take their soil sample. Well, really any time the soil is not frozen is a good time. April and May have the highest volume months, so this will likely slow the response time of your results, and typically not advised. Fall is optimum, especially if lime is thought to be needed, so it's, it can take a long time for that lime to activate. This can also allow you to prepare nutrients ahead of time if you're sampling in the fall, uh, so you're ready to go by the time others are thinking it's springtime, and then things get very busy and very limited. So fall sampling is advised, but really, there's no best time of year anytime the soil is not frozen. Now, how to test the soil? Well, when you're going about, you want to search out a local lab and download their instructions and, very importantly, their required paperwork. Be sure to read this and follow the instructions. I also have another video on how to properly take a soil sample as a good guide, but make sure you're also getting the right paperwork for the lab that you'll be testing. Uh, fill, it all, fill it all out, write it neatly, mail it off with any payment that's required with the soil sample, and you'll hopefully get results back as quick as the lab can process them, so you can go through and make adjustments if you need to to maximize your plant yield. 